Welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman, where you'll learn how to awaken your divine soul and open your human heart. Sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. Here's Sarah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. I am so glad to be with you here as we uh, head into, we're finishing up April 2018, and we're going to move on into May 2018, which around here where I live uh, starts the beginning of, you know, late spring, early summer. Uh, A lot of you guys up here in Pacific Northwest are noticing the heat has started to come on, not the not the rough heat, but uh, everything is everything is greening up and growing and very, very lush. And it's an exciting time because we're reminded of the power of growth and how things grow. Today, we're going to talk about how can we transform ourselves. And we're going to look at this idea of the growth. We're going to look at this idea of how quickly growth happens and how we move from these passages of growing, growing, growing to possibly a place where we're in a rest period or even we might think we're in a stuck period. Uh, And then we move again to growing, growing, growing very quickly, very, very lush, fertile growth. So we're going to look at all this today. And of course, today is Free Readings Tuesday. And Free Readings Tuesday, you can call into the show, and I am happy to look at whatever is going on in your life and just kind of take a look at that. My, uh, the number to call in is eight. I was going to say my number, <laughs> but it's not really my number. It's their, it's KKNW's number, but you can call in to 888-298-5569. Free Readings Tuesday. It's 888-298-5569. And the lines are uh, mostly open right now. So if you want to call in, there's a really great chance you're going to get time to uh, have a free reading. It's a service that I've been offering for, golly, I think this is my uh, seventh year of doing this show or a version of this show. And really enjoy talking to everybody and seeing what's on your mind and seeing the kinds of things that you're going through. Again, we're talking today about how can we transform ourselves? Because most of us, you know, we're, we arrive on this earth, we arrive into this, this uh, soul arrives into this body with this ego and personality, and we aren't content to just stay as, I don't know, say as our our parents led us to be, or say as society wants us to be, or even other people around us. We really are here to explore and to be on the path and to see how far we can get in terms of um, working through the particular things that are challenging for us. And for some people, this might be job And for some people, it might be relationship. And for some people, it might be body. And for some people, it might, you know, heck, it might just be your personality. That's what I'm usually dealing with, my personality. And here we are. How can we transform ourselves? We're continually on the path of how far can we get? How far can we get from being a human being, which is great, it's lovely. It's wonderful. But how far can we get in transforming ourselves into being a divine being so that instead of the ego leading, we start to live from soul first with the soul, the divine part, the infinite part. We start to live from that awareness instead. How do we do that? How do we make that shift or that change? So um, we're going to be talking about that. So in terms of housekeeping, I like to focus on what's happening. So uh, KKN 
W broadcasts out of Seattle ish, uh, <laughs> Bellevue, I guess, but uh, Seattle. And so for all you listening in Seattle, I'm going to be coming to Seattle in May at East West Bookshop. Uh, Dr. Steve and I are going to be doing a um, an event and a mini concert for free on Friday. And I think it's the, um, the 17th of May. And then on the 18th, I'm teaching a workshop um, on that Saturday. So go to East West Bookshop. Um, dot com, and you can um, you can sign up for those. You have to make a reservation, so please do that. Um, and we'd love to see you in Seattle. Now, Seattle is not the only place I'm coming because what I'm doing is I'm on book tour for my new book, Messages from the Divine. Um, but I'm also coming to Portland, Corvallis, uh, Gresham, Salem. Denver, doing a bunch of events in Denver, and just found out we're going to go to Mountain View, California. Um, so very happy about all of this and really excited to come see you guys. And you guys know I'm, I'm, not a good, <laughs> I'm not a good traveler, right? So I'm facing this idea of how do we transform ourselves. I am facing a lot of my personal challenges in terms of travel and, and getting really confused <laughs> at airports. <laughs> <laughs> and getting really confused driving rental cars and so forth. So um, I'm I'm coming out to meet you, and I'm I'm um, rising up to the personal challenges that are particular to me. Would love to see you at some of these places. Go to the website sarahwiseman.com. Go to the events page, and you'll see it all listed there. And of course, while you're there, if you haven't ordered the book yet, Messages from the Divine. Please go ahead and do that. That's what we are going to be working through on this radio show and basically in everything that I'm teaching upcoming for this through the, this through the end of 2018, we're going to be working on these messages, these spiritual teachings, this new spiritual thought system that I received at three and four in the morning for many months on end it just came um, just came through me and it's um, astounding spiritual teachings. We're going to be working on that and I would love for you to be able to follow along with that as uh, as we make our way. Again, you can get it at sarahwiseman.com. And now let us just go into meditation before we go to the phones. And let's go ahead and close our eyes if you're in a place that you can do that. And take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And in through the nose and out through the mouth. And I just want you to imagine in your mind's eye that you have a big glass jar and inside this jar there's this thing that you believe you really want more than anything. You believe that this is what you want. This has been your goal. This is what you have been working toward. And I want you to also picture that you've got your hand inside the jar. This is the classic, you know, the monkey with the hand in the jar. And you're holding really tightly to this thing, this idea. And then, of course, when you try and pull your hand out of the jar, it's stuck. You can't, you can't do it. You can't get the thing and your hand out of the jar at the same time. But you're holding on. And I just want you to look at this idea of this thing that you want, whether it's a job or a relationship or something with your body or something with your personality or an ambition or a goal. Keep holding tightly to it. And I want you to sense if perhaps 
this thing, this thing that's been on your mind, you've been really focused on, is really something that, if it's really the right thing for you or not, now it may be, or it may not. And I just want you to notice what happens either. As you look again, you're either you're going to be able to pull your hand and this thing out of the jar, or this thing is going to just dissolve right in the jar and you're going to take your hand out. It's either something that is being manifest and created exactly as you think, or it's something that requires that you look at it an entirely different way. You have to release, not the goal, perhaps, not the longing, but the idea of what this is going to do. The idea of your deep need, supposedly, for this thing. And just notice which happens. Either you pull it out easily, it's manifest already, or something is stuck in your own idea about this thing and what it means to you. And I just want you to notice which happens for you. Either you pull it out easily, or the thing itself just sort of dissolves into kind of shimmery, shimmery, whatever, celestial shimmer. And if your object of desire dissolved this doesn't mean that you stop working on this particular idea. It means that you approach it. Instead of trying to approach it in the human way, the factual way, the linear way, you begin to approach it from the position of soul and that this is a personal challenge, a soul challenge for you. And you are asked to look at this a different way, not from this lifetime's perspective, but from the idea that you have infinite lifetimes and this is just one little thing, just one little part of it. And I'd like you to drop that reality, the infinite nature of you into the mix here and realize like this thing, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's uh, my good friend, Deborah Lynn Katz, the pretty well-known psychic down in California. She just, she uses the word, it's a blip. It's just a blip. Don't get all hung up on this one piece. You're an infinite soul. We got lots of pieces to attend to. And all of these are here to help you expand. And when you start to look, of course, from infinite soul perspective, there is no longer even any glass jar. There's nothing to grab. Plenty of time to move through every single thing. And with that, we will begin some time with the callers. All righty. So first up, we have, uh, I believe it's Craig calling from Australia. Craig, welcome. Hi, Sarah. How are you going? Fine. Have we talked before? Is this the person I think I've talked to a couple times, maybe? Yeah, we spoke about uh, 18 months, two years ago. Yes, it's been a while. So um, how is your life going for you, or what uh, would you like to look into today? Um. When we spoke about 18 months ago, um, you gave me some help with, uh, I had a couple of jobs to choose from, and um, you said, you said that I, um, there was one better for my future and that it would lead to better things, um, or get, I would get there faster, I think, with the term you used. Um, I'm just wondering how that's going, because I'm a bit frustrated with my job at the and um, just a bit lonely, so I was just wondering 
to go to meet Bowl, meet someone or or what's happening in that department. So um, I guess what I want to talk about, which is a little different than your question, but, and also I wanted to say, you know, I said all this part, you probably heard about how it's getting really green and warm here in the Pacific Northwest. And I'm realizing in Australia, it's probably starting to get really cold, <laughs> really cold. And you're heading into your winter down there. But so sorry about that. Um, yeah, no, I'm what not I, walking. What, <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. What What are you doing? What's your spiritual practice right now? That's my main question for you. Kind of knowing knowing you a little bit and kind of knowing what you you know how you operate. What are you doing for your for your spiritual uh, replenishment? Uh, what What do you What's okay? So I do a little bit of yoga. Um, mm-hmm. when, on on Sundays and uh, I'm trying to grass meditation um i get all your daily divines and read all the lessons all the ones that are applicable to me that i need to master and i think that's probably about it i read a few books so when when you're doing any spiritual stuff is there anything you're doing that brings on like um feeling of being emotional like for a lot of people it's like mu- music is one of the things, or for you, it might be nature. It brings on that kind of emotional feeling of like your heart being opened. So, do you have a lot of that put into your life? Um, maybe, I'm not, but then I, I don't know to, I don't know to recognize that my heart's open, I suppose, so mm-hmm. I, it, it could be, um, yeah. Well, so that's what I'm, um, I mean, I think uh, different people have different na- natures, you know, just their personality nature, and yep. I think yoga is great, but it's more, it's more physical, and meditation can be more, um, I don't know, just, just a state, a state of kind of, of absenting yourself, but it, it feels like, it feels like what would be good for you would be, um, something that is very emotionally opening that helps you feel a lot of feelings. And I know you're going like, no, I don't want to feel any feelings, but that's the piece where it feels like you're kind of, you're kind of, um, numbed out and it's not really um that you're doing anything wrong it's just that there's not a lot of stimulation in your life that's bringing you to this more expanded state it's like the people you're around are pretty kind of practical and so you're going to need to work a little harder to get that heart opening going on it's it's almost like you're just in this state of uh very reserved or numbed out or understimulated. And that's the piece to pay attention to. Um, the, the universe can't really bring you guidance unless you've got this opening. And right now you've yeah. got everything kind of almost like, it's almost like even your spirituality is kind of practical or, you know, oh, I did yoga. Okay, that's done. And what what I'm suggesting is that this big emotional heart opening is what uh, is the next step for you. And from that, all these other pieces, relationship, being being able to be really intimate and open in relationship, sexually intimate, just all of that emotion. And then also having the, um, the, uh, being able to look around for other opportunities for work that fill you up more. It just almost feels like you're kind of marking, you know, marching through the days without much having much meaning for you. And it feels like if you open emotionally, either in music or nature, or um, even it could be dancing, ecstatic dance, uh, you, you got to open that self up. 
in order for the next piece to happen to you. How, how do you feel about getting more emotional? What does that feel like to you? Um, uh, yeah, I, I would say I'm emotionally um, in limbo, like you say, but that's more from just reflecting on how stale my life is, I would say. Like you said, so it's mm-hmm. sort of a, mm-hmm. a vicious cycle. So, yes, yeah, I, I well, I, I would, I would, I would think that I am emotional though, because I don't know. I've rung you, and I, I think about it a lot. And is this what life's about? So it's, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. Well, I sort of understand what yeah, you're saying just, about it, um, but I don't really know what about it. Yeah. Well, just go through, go ahead maybe this week and concentrate on how you feel and concentrate on being really vulnerable with, you know, be really open with the people you're around and just look for ways to have, just feel, to let yourself feel more and just kind of experiment with that. I know it seems really simple, but it feels like it's like you've, You've got to get opened up, and um, the things that you're doing, I don't think are, they're almost just numbing you out more. You've got to get some opening, and I think that that will lead you um, more towards where you're trying to go. You're trying to have a more meaningful life, and you got to get that emotion in there to, to allow that to happen, and to allow yourself to meet, you know, the person to be in relationship with, and just to allow everything to change, really. You gotta get that, mm-hmm. let that emotion come through. Well, Craig, thank you so much for calling, and um, I sure appreciate uh, your your taking the time to call us all the way from uh, where you are in Australia. So, I appreciate that, and I wish you the best. Okay, thank you. Thank for you. Having the time to talk to me. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thanks. Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes all these uh, techniques of spirituality, they're not right for every personal, every type of person or every person's style. If you're a person that's more reserved, then more stillness isn't going to be the right thing for you. Maybe you need to go to ecstatic dance and, you know, let your hair down. Or if you're a person that's got a very tightly wound schedule with a lot of producing, maybe you need you know, that freedom of the expandedness of nature to kind of set you right. You got to let that heart be awed by everything around us. All righty, let us uh, go to the phones. And we have Janet calling from Seattle. Janet, welcome to the program. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, what can I help you out with today? Well, um, I have a deep grief that's still there from when my beloved dog died a year and a half ago. And, um, I thought I've, I've been working on myself to, um, to make myself, um, fresher, uh, more, more, um, I don't know, more noticing of, of, uh, the good things in life. And I'm a senior citizen and one that used to be a good things in life. If you'd say hi to people on the sidewalk, they'd say hi back to you. But, now the the middle generation has has stopped talking to anybody. Sometimes I look to see if there's earbuds in their ears, and sometimes there are, and I give them a pardon, and sometimes they're not, and then I'll say hi again, and they still won't talk. And so there's like a closing down of connectivity in my experience of so many years. <laughs> I'm 70. Mm-hmm. Um, where, mm-hmm. And I'm connected with nature, but... What has happened to the connection of people in society? I don't see how we'll have a good future if we don't all know all kinds of people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a really, really interesting um, interesting issue that you bring up, and especially at uh, your age of 70-ish, um, that's, that's almost like you're bridging. Um, you're still of the generation that, you know, has exposure to technology, whereas, say, people in their 80s might not have ever gotten on the technology train. So you're in a really interesting, interesting position there. 
Well, I think I want to talk, there's a couple things about what you're saying. And so let me address first um, the grieving over your dog. Um, sometimes our animals are so bonded with us. You know, a lot of people believe that animals are, um, animals are these soul companions that help us during a particular passage or group of soul lessons in our life. And I have a feeling that that's what your dog was doing for you, kind of taking you through a passage in your life. Do you know, do you have the idea of what the passage would be? What, what comes to mind when we, when I talk about your dog taking you through a part, a big important part of your life? Oh, she was extremely affectionate. Mm -hmm. How long did you have her? Oh, she only lasted three years. She came to me as a three-year-old, and she um, died at six. Okay, so you had her for a briefer period of time. So she probably was there to support you during some life changes that you were going through to provide that connection and bond and to, you know, kind of be that companion for you. And then, and then without her, you don't have that daily onslaught of, of affection and, and excitement yeah. and, and so forth. Yeah. So I'm thinking that it's the solution for you is not going to be found. Um, I mean, it, it's at, at, at your age, you probably think, I don't want to make any big changes, but I feel that this loneliness you're experiencing or this lack of connection it's not going to be solved by doing whatever habits you are doing now. Um, I'm not sure where you live, but it feels like you need to live in a place where there's more people of your age group living and, um, or more of a smaller community where people are more likely to, you know, chat and so forth. Have you considered the possibility of, of moving to somewhere different where there's more people Similar to well, you? Well, I am the queen of 8th Avenue. I have lived here 48 years. <laughs> and it's a sidewalk mm-hmm, mm-hmm. community. And it runs between mm-hmm. two elementary schools and a church. And at one block either way of us are arterials where there's the services like pizza places or beer parlors or wherever. It's a, This is a place where people use it. And I always aspired to be out there on the sidewalk and acquainted with people and and having an idea of any age of person what how they're connecting with community what they're about um but now if this people that really only want to text they don't want to talk to people um if that's Mm -hmm. the future then i guess i would change i absolutely did not want to go to a senior center where they just talk about their grandkids i've i've been told because yeah, I wanted to be among all I ages of people. Yes. Yeah, I'm not really seeing you at a senior center. I didn't mean to suggest that. Um, I think if when, what I look at it is, is we we are in places, even if, you know, we feel like someplace is home, and we're in those places until the time is that it's time for us to change. And maybe you're meant to live there and and bring people to you in some way, like getting a roommate. I, I don't know. I don't know. Lots, you know, just attracting people to you, but it feels like where you are has changed and there's no way you're going to find what you used to have where you are now any further. And so then you got to look at, well, if it's, if what I'm seeking isn't there anymore, then do I just keep trying to get that still or, do I look at changing myself, changing myself so I can get what I wanted? Because you're only 70. You don't want to be lonely and and having this sort of frustrated communication for the next 10 or 20 years. Like, what's the point of that? Like, go be where you can connect with others. So I would just allow yourself to have the idea that the deeper question is that you want to connect. And if you can't get it where you are now, why not think about some options of well, where could I get that and just see where the universe kind of leads you just because 
man, we need people who want to connect. <laughs> Other people are looking to connect and they're looking for you too. So go find where they are. Are you thinking like you know, don't, don't get country? stuck? I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking actually what comes to my picture in my mind is almost just like a smaller, um, smaller town where people are more likely to be a little more leisurely and, and, and chat and chat, chat away, you know, just a smaller, a smaller uh, outlying town might be nice. Well, Janet, I need to take a break for the show. Okay. So I, um, I wish you luck. I think it's all, I think it's all going to be okay, but, uh, and I thank you for your call today. Thank you for your insight, Sarah. We are going to take, yeah, thank you. We're going to take a quick break. You've been listening to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. You'll find me at sarahwiseman.com, and we'll be back in just a moment. Ready to learn the secrets of spiritual intuition? Did you know that Sarah Wiseman offers over 20 courses in psychic development, soul growth, karma, healing, past lives, and more? And that they are all sliding scale, pay what you want? These premium online courses are self-study, so you can work on your own schedule. Sign up for Sarah's courses now at sarahwiseman.com. That's S-A-R-A Wiseman.com. Going our own way every day. Alternative Talk 1150. Hush, hush, my child, and they say, Hush, hush, my child, and they say, Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. Today, we're talking about how can we transform ourselves. And uh, kind of listening to the last couple callers, you know, this idea of if you're getting to that place where you're, you know, you're, you're this example we did in our meditation, you're trying to grab for the thing in the glass jar, but then you try and pull it out and you can't get it because you're grabbing so hard. Whether this is um, trying to figure out what makes your life meaningful, the first person, what, what, how to have more connection in your life. These things that we all deeply long for. So if the way that you've been you know, moving toward isn't working, it's time to just be like, huh, well maybe there's a different way. Maybe maybe there's another way of doing this rather than trying harder at the way that I've been working it. Uh, you know, and 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 my go-to is always, well, what does the universe say? How can I go into uh, meditation and do these quick looks at uh, what what visions does the guidance bring me, or what messages, or um, how can I follow where the universe is trying to take me? instead of kind of hacking my way through the path on my own with my personality leading, how can I let my soul take me there? And this is the way we get transformed. You know, we start to let the universe lead us, and it's not always the way that our mind or our ego or our personality is trying to, uh, you know, hack through the path. Often it's this deep relaxing and opening our hearts and just going, you know, show me, show me the path because I'm confused and I'm lost. Where am I supposed to go? And then once we drop out, once we relax the hand in the jar, everything becomes possible. All the possibilities become available to us. Today is free readings Tuesday. You can call in to 888 298 5569 and I'm going to say it again it's 
298-5569. Lines are open. That means if you call, you're going to get through. And let us go right now to Allison calling from California. Allison, welcome to the program. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Hello? welcome. What can I... Well, yeah, oh. thank you. Thanks for your patience. What can I help you out with oh, today? Oh, sure. I love your show. Um, I just wanted to talk about possible career for me or changes in that way or um, home situation moving, but I guess possibly doing something for a living as opposed to just um, doing like healing work for people. Um, I'm not sure if that should be a career or if I should just do it for people when they want it and kind of as a gift or should I do it? Should I set up kind of a business or not? I'm not sure. I want to do that or if I should do that or or where to do that. You know, um, so yeah, so um, a little bit. it absolutely it absolutely seems 100% that um, you are actually at the start of a pretty big like energy flow or like a cycle of growth. So mm-hmm. I would and not everybody's at, on a cycle of growth right now, you know, probably like half the people here are are in more of a resting phase. And but you're mm-hmm. in a cycle of of growth. And so I would absolutely formalize this and um, get a business started and um, yeah. see how you do. I think you'll do very well being an entrepreneur. Oh, um, yeah, I like that. I'm anyway, just wondering, kind of you know, I, I, th- I think, well, go ahead. Sorry, I, go I'm ahead. Saying I, I am kind of that person already. It was just the more of the logistics of how to do it because I'm, I just started helping a woman um, at her home just on her bed, <laughs> sitting on her bed with her. She has mm-hmm. a pretty serious, serious mm-hmm. situation. Um, and, um, you know, then I was thinking, well, how would I go from here if I want to do this? And if I, w- I would only want to do it if I thought I could really, really, really be good at it. You know, I wouldn't want to just do something that would, I would be uh, mediocre and not make a, mm-hmm. you know, not, I'm just, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to just do mm-hmm. it for relaxation. I would want to do it for actually, because I've, Yep. kind of developed the gift when I was younger, when I was about 17. And I went away from mm-hmm. it and so forth, but I never, it was never from a training, I, although I have taken Reiki courses. But um, it, it's, um, for me, it's always more exciting when I, when it's more of just really, really, really powerful. And that's kind of what I want to do. I don't really, I'm not interested in just sort of standing around and, and just relaxation type of healing. Yeah, you, yeah, important. you want to do yeah. you want to do the real work, the real work mm-hmm. of actual uh healing and transforming people. Yeah, so I talk to her too. go yeah. forward and set up yeah, well and set up this business so that you're like, "Hey universe, I'm ready. <laughs> I want to do <laughs> the real thing. I want to do the I mean, there's a purpose for the relaxing part. That's fine. Oh, know, uh, there's that. there's oh, a lot of value in that, but that's not what you're here for. So oh, just really manifest or just really say to the universe, I really want to do the real thing. How do I step into that? And then just begin to set up um, from there. I, I always found really helpful to look for people that um, I call them templates. I look for people that are doing like what I'm thinking about. And mm-hmm. then I look at at those and so maybe find like four or five examples of like oh and they don't have to be around you they could be all over the world um people that are doing the real work and then the universe will take you there Uh, the other thing allison i wouldn't okay yeah yeah absolutely and i wouldn't wait very long like you have a lot of like i don't i don't know or i'm not sure it's like let all that go like just (laughs) yeah but how to do it is just like you just like you start and then you figure (laughs) it's like you start (laughs) and then you figure it out that's how to do it it's just (laughs) just plan on failing plan on failing many times yeah right yeah i you know i just didn't know where to do it and go to homes maybe yeah just start like just start with, um, I like to start with a business and a website because that helps you determine, you know, how you're going to set things up. And, um, mm-hmm. it's almost like doing your, your, your manifesting or your mission statement or your statement to the universe of show me what I'm doing. And, uh, 
I'd, okay. I'd get started on that like this weekend and just, there's no delay, or no need to delay. In fact, you okay. shouldn't delay. You should just step into it. Hey, okay. thank you so much for calling. I appreciate your call. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. So Good luck to you. Time. Thanks a lot. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So we do probably have time. If somebody called in real quick, 888-298-5569, we could probably fit in another caller. Uh, 888-298-5569. I want to talk about this idea of how can we transform ourselves. And really, the whole idea is that we transform ourselves a little tiny bit at a time. Um, and then one day, we just notice, like, it's happened. So I, I um, talked a little bit at a, a recent um, event that we did, a music event, about the trees here, you know, a couple weeks ago, the trees were just bare stick, still winter. And then I started to notice that the trees were sort of vibrating a little bit. They had an energy shimmer around them. And I was waiting for that day when the green would come. And it only was two days time from being bare stick to being this massive pop of this maple maple flower or other flowers, not the leaves yet. The leaves have just started. They're tiny little leaves, but everything's green. The whole area is just covered in chlorophyll and pollen, like it's dusted on the cars. Everything is this sort of bright yellow green of transformation, of growth, of change. And this is how it is for us. We're like, working and working and working internally. And then, wow, it, it happens. It happens. So I just want you to trust yourself, this idea that, um, this idea that work and work and work and do the internal work and do the healing and do the, do the spiritual practice and do the opening of your heart and boom, one day, ha, huh, I've changed. I've transformed. I've come through that particular challenge or that particular misunderstanding, that particular misbelief or that particular thing that's been bugging me for years and years and years. I've gotten through it. All righty, let's go to Gail from Carnation, and then we're going to do a little reading from my new book, Messages from the Divine. Gail, welcome. What can I help you out with today? Hi, Sarah. Thank you for taking my call. I am just, um, sure. I was just listening to you talk to other people, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to call. Um, I'm just wondering about this property that we ha we have, and um, you know, like how to move forward with it. What should we keep it? Should we sell it? Should we remodel it? Should we, you know, this is a, it's a big deal, and we're trying to figure out how to move forward in the rest of our life. You know, for the rest of our life, my husband and I. Yeah, so so part of it dropped out a little bit. So um, I think what you said was that you have a property that you're considering. Should you sell it or remodel it? Is that right? Yeah, sell or remodel it or keep it or you know. And is this your um, is this your um, residence? It is, but we rent it out to to be able to hang on to it. We rent it out like vacation type thing for part mm -hmm. okay. of the year. Got it. So, yeah. And yeah. A, so what I'm what I'm getting is that it it feels like um, uh, potentially uh, it feels like you and your husband um, aren't completely like on the same page about this. It's not like it's a big argument, but it's sort of like I, I think it feels like he wants to hang on to it more, and you want to make some change or or use it a little bit more. Um, I would just. I would spend, this is about more than the property. This is about what's can, what, what are we doing with our lives? Like, how do we want to live? And I think that I would spend some time individually for you. And I know you've been doing this, but I'd go deeper. It's not about the property. It's about how do you want to spend, you know, th these next decades um, thinking about that? Like, do you even want to be there? Do you want to try something different? What are you, what are your bigger hopes and dreams for where you are. And then once you've sort of done some of that exploration, um, start talking 
with your husband because I think you're going to find some different ideas and then you're going to have to figure out, well, how can we each get, you know, what we each want in the proper way? So think of this as a symbol, um, as a symbol of the discussion of how do we want to live? And, and what I'm seeing is that you're kind of holding on to something because it's, it's of the past, but actually letting it go would allow for like a huge amount of more interesting possibilities. And that may be something that uh, you are going to find really thrilling to just like, let's try something different. So that's kind of what I'm seeing for you there. I'm going to let you go, Gail, because we had such a rough connection, but I hope that helps you out. And I hope you were able to hear uh, what it I does. said Thank there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm sorry for Thanks. the connection. Yeah. But- Yes, thank you. No, Sarah. no problem. I'm mm-hmm. glad you called. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes we have these things, you know, on paper, it looks really good. But when we let go, the universe can bring in new things, right? When we let go of the old idea, it creates space for a new possibility. And perhaps, usually, that something new is where the universe has been trying to take us this whole time. How can we transform ourselves? We transform ourselves a little bit at a time. And then one day we find (laughs) there we are. I want to read a little bit from my new book, Messages from the Divine. You can get it now. Uh, Just go to Amazon. It's a book of spiritual teachings. Um, I received them. I was woken up the middle of the night for many months And I wrote this book basically with my eyes closed on a laptop while the whole rest of the house slept. And it is some profound teachings. This one is the more time you spend aware, the better your life gets. It starts that kind of, kind of strong. You can't drink poison and expect to be cured. Poison only poisons. This is what poison does. You can't add dark to something and expect to see light. Darkness only adds more darkness. That's just what it does. When you are aware for even a moment, when you spend even a moment in consciousness, you begin to feel differently about everything about your life about your situation about your circumstance about yourself and self has a capital L S your true essence yourself when you are in divine space there is no shame anger pain despair There is no need to numb yourself when you exist in this vast space of light. We say, this is how you can live all the time. We say, this can be your experience always if you choose. It is simply a matter of leaning toward the light over and over and over again. Just like these trees that are popping out suddenly, leaning toward the light. In every moment you have this choice, darkness or light. In every moment you choose and you do choose. It is always your choice. And I want to interrupt here just to comment on this uh, text from the book, Messages from the Divine. When the book speaks about darkness, it's not a morality There's never any morality about uh, what is supposedly sinful or dark or or the way we think of it that way. Darkness is really about being separate from the universe or darkness is really about being in the dark, kind of like not being awake, just sort of going through the motions, following society's map and never, never wondering, you know, what it is that you want, what you hoped for, what your heart longs for. That's being in the dark, where you're just sort of not conscious, you're in fear, you're asleep. You're just kind of hanging out, going through the motions. When you step into the light, you're having, 
your true self, walking your true path. You're doing what you really came here to do. So the, the book continues. We say also, you can choose dark your entire life, every moment, every opportunity, every chance. And then in one moment, you can choose light. And this one choice will change everything. Light illuminates dark. Levity trumps gravity. The soul rises from the mundane. We say, attach to the essence of what you are. Light leaning toward more light. Light leaning toward more light. We come to this idea of how can we transform ourselves. It's really just a little bit at a time. It's just these little things where you have a personal challenge and instead of gripping further and harder onto this personal challenge in fear or in anger or in anxiety or all these ways that we tend to react from our personality, we just let go of the whole emotional response of the whole emotional spiral. And we just let go and we understand ourselves as infinite souls all the time we need. Nothing's pressurized, nothing's stressed. We're being exactly led in our right direction. And all we need to do is follow how the universe is, you know, uh, these, these signs and signals that the universe is continually laying down for us. I think there's some rap song now. It's like, are you picking up what I'm dropping down or something <laughs> something like that? But it's like the universe is continually showing us the way. And all we got to do is just sort of look around and pay attention and be aware and follow the signs and synchronicities that are there and let go of those ideas that are, you know, oh, I should do this. If I don't, you know, this is more practical. This is, this is, you know, if I, you know, it's fearfulness and et cetera and so forth. Just letting go of that entire approach, that fear, anger, anxiety, drama, distraction approach. And just really stepping out into it, leaning toward the light every day, just a little bit more. You mess up. Okay. You just start back again, lean toward the light again. So everybody, I want to bring your attention to a couple things. One, we are registering right now for Spiritual Psychic Summer 2018, and that is my summer group training. We do it by distance. So anywhere you are in the world, if you have um, a, a phone and internet access, uh, we all work together. I like to do this as an online thing because that is people from all over the world come to this uh, spiritual psychic group training. You can find out about it at sarahwiseman.com. The other thing I think I mentioned before, I'm going to be at East West Books in Seattle, New Renaissance Books in Portland, East West Books in Mountain View, Isis Books and Shining Lotus Books, and First Spiritual Science Church in Denver. And so I'm coming out to meet you guys, and I'm promoting my book, Messages from the Divine, which you can get right now, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, et cetera, et cetera. Um, please get the book. It's um, really an astonishing connect collection of spiritual teachings, and we're going to be working from it and reading from it um, from now from now through because there's so much to dig into. There's so much to um, understand and learn from. The book talks about living from your soul, and the book talks about how to speak the language of the universe, all the ways that the universe is always communicating with you. Um, last but last, not least, I have a free Seeker's Guide, an 11-week online course that you can get at sarahwiseman.com. Just go right there. You'll see it right there, a free course. And this is a companion study guide to the book. It's absolutely free. Um, we've got a thousand people signed up already. So this is going to be a rocking, a rocking course. And it begins in May when the book launches. So everybody, I want to say thank you so much for listening. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, reincarnation, past lives. Have we been here 
many times before. Um, we're going to talk about that, and uh, we're going to continue on with our teaching from the book. Um, if you want to try to reach me, you can find me at sarahwiseman.com. And look forward to being with you next time. Uh, you've been listening to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. Want more of Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman? Tune in weekly for more divine teachings on living a soul-led life. Want Sarah's books, courses, and free gifts? Visit sarahwiseman.com.